So on the 30th of September 1916, the contest between the former world middleweight champion George Chip and Les Darcy. Chip was aged 28 and Darcy was just four weeks away from his 21st birthday. Darcy, as usual, in the long shorts. This might easily be described as Darcy's most important fight and the fans have turned up in their thousands. It's an absolute sellout with a capacity crowd of 16,000. Darcy has no weight problems this time and he's just under the limit. Chip almost the same weight at 11 stone 5. The referee once again is Arthur Scott. The famous US frontier marshal Bat Masterson, who is now a sports journalist in New York, wrote that Chip was the hardest punching middleweight to travel to Australia and he predicted that one solid punch from Chip could spell curtains for Darcy. History will prove that Bat Masterson was a long way wide of the mark. Chip was an aggressive attacking boxer with an open stance and a roundhouse punching action. He tended to throw punches from all angles, even a backhand slap. His style actually suited Darcy right down to the ground. The Australian was a straight puncher and his straight left in particular proved to be a decisive factor in this fight. The end of round one with Darcy, a slight leader on points, and some old-fashioned air conditioning between rounds. Out they come for round two. Chip was campaigning for a return match with the current world champion Al McCoy, to whom he lost the title in a sensational first round knockout. A win over Darcy here would be regarded as an important stepping stone. Darcy, as always, for hoping for some form of official recognition from the authorities in the United States. In this round, a Darcy straight left caused a cut on Chip's chin and blood was flowing in the second round of this fight. This was Darcy's 14th fight in the space of 12 months and his gross earnings for the period were estimated at nearly 5,000 pounds, a small fortune in those days. Wisely, Darcy did not let the money slip through his fingers. A new family home at Maitland was a tangible asset. On the debit side, his prospects were not good. After George Chip, there was virtually no one else left to fight. Darcy's concern about his boxing future gives some clue to the reason for his actions later on. There's that left coming through from Darcy. He really takes a backward step in this fight and he's right at his peak.
on matter round three with Darcy, a clear leader on points. This film, more than any other, gives the best idea of Darcy's exceptional ability. It's easy to rate him a world beater if he's up against second raters, but here there's no doubt in the quality of the opposition. George Chip was an authentic world champion, and he remains a major contender for the title. The longer this fight goes, the better Darcy looks, and it's hard to believe he's the same boxer who looked so ordinary against Jimmy Clabby three weeks before. One assessment of the fight says that Chip is throwing more punches, but Darcy is landing more often, and that's the important thing. Some of the American journalists claim that Chip would knock Chips off Darcy. Well, that's certainly not happening. He's using that right to clubbing effect. Darcy consistently scoring points. And he's now built up a good lead towards the end of round three. Darcy scoring there with his right uppercut. Darcy looking very strong. And Chip at the end of round three looks decidedly wobbly as he goes back to his corner. In round four, Darcy maintains the attack. Unfortunately, clinching is not really a problem in this fight, and to the credit of Chip, he tries to take the fight up to Darcy all the time, and that really suits the Australian champion. Darcy again scoring there with lefts and rights. It's appropriate that we show all of the action from this fight with Chip because history will prove that this is the last time that Les Darcy will appear in a fight at Sydney Stadium. There's that backhand slap from Chip, which is really there to annoy Darcy. It doesn't hurt him very much.
on now to round five, and some experienced ringside judges have Darcy winning every round so far. It's a masterly display of boxing, and in the fifth round he gives a brilliant effort here. Chip is still trying to throw rights and lefts from all angles, but a lot of the power has gone out of his punches. And the celebrated not knockout punch mentioned by Bat Masterson is just non-existent. In fact, Darcy's scoring clearly here. Professional boxing is not just a matter of throwing and receiving punches, it's also a matter of boxing skill. And this takes us back to the days when Darcy was coached by Dave Smith. He shows brilliant skill in this round as he turns Chip right around and completely outboxes him. Brilliant work by Darcy. are way ahead on points. Now what can Chip do in round six? Darcy first out of his corner, really taking the fight to his opponent. Perhaps Darcy's main feature is his persistence in attack. He just comes in here keeping on throwing punch after punch. And he's absolutely relentless in his attack. That left sending Chip's head back. And Darcy's piling on the points. The main regret, of course, is that Darcy never had the opportunity to fight for an official world championship right through his career. He's a, he certainly deserved to be called a world champion. He was in Australia, but never in the United States. round six and Darcy's not in the least bit concerned about the power of Chip's punches. He's still throwing them but there's no power in them at all.
the end of round six and Darcy well ahead on points. Chip looks a beaten boxer as I come out for round seven. There's that left going through from Darcy. The left-right combination scoring with both punches. Sixteen thousand fans at Sydney Stadium, and they're all pro Les Darcy. The excitement at Fever Pitch as Darcy builds up this huge lead on points, and he's landing punches on the trip about the rate of five to one. Chip can't hit him. Darcy scoring quite freely here, and Chip is bleeding from several cuts on the mouth. seven and we move on now to round eight and just a question now how long will chip last Darcy looks fresh and fit as he comes out for round eight Chip hasn't landed a solid punch for about three or four rounds, but it's a different story with Darcy. in a frenzy of excitement as Darcy goes on the attack here in the eighth round. heavily with his right and the left too. Chip at this stage is just hanging on.
round eight, and we move on now to round nine, and this was destined to be the last round of this epic fight. Darcy in round nine looking fresh from the very start, and Chip is a very tired boxer. And Darcy scoring with that right, with that little uppercut there. Chip hanging on. Chip is just about on his knees as Darcy sustains his attack. is heading towards a rapid conclusion. A flurry of punches from Darcy and the former world middleweight champion George Chip ends up flat on his back being counted out by referee Scott. Regrettably that was Darcy's 50th and last fight. In the history of sports.